Hey everyone, my name is Previn, and today I'm going to give you a quick demo of Pipedream. First, I'll build and deploy a simple service in less than a minute that generates a unique endpoint URL and echoes back data when I make an HTTP request in production. Next, I'll show you how to use any NPM package and pre-built actions on Pipedream. I'll pull some test data from the Pokemon API and summarize it using OpenAI. Finally, I'll demonstrate some more advanced features, including AI-generated actions, GitHub Sync, database connections, and more. If you're new to Pipedream, we make it easy to integrate all the services in your stack, including APIs, AI, databases, and more, with code level control when you need it and no code when you don't. For today's demo, I'll use test data from the Pokemon API, but Pipedream is most valuable when you're working with your own business data and apps. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a project. Projects are like apps. They group related resources and can be synced with a GitHub repo. Next, I'll create a workflow and I'll add an HTTP trigger. For the first example, I'll simply echo back data on an HTTP request. So I'll update the trigger configuration to return a response from my workflow. When I save my changes, Pipedream will generate a unique URL to trigger my workflow. Next, I'll generate a test event that passes the name of a Pokemon as query data. No matter what trigger you're using, one of the most important steps is to always generate a test event that can help you build your workflow. You can then reference this data in future steps via the steps object. Next, I'll add a step to return a custom HTTP response from my workflow. I'll right-click on the trigger tab to split the panes so I can edit the steps side by side. Then I'll copy the steps object reference to my test data and paste it in the body field of the HTTP response step. Finally, I'll test my changes and click deploy. My workflow is now running in production. To test it, I'll load the URL and pass the name of a different Pokemon. The data is echoed back as expected, and I can also inspect the execution in Pipedream. Okay, for the next part of the demo, Let's integrate this workflow with the Pokemon API and OpenAI. First, I'll go back into edit mode and I'll add a Node.js code step. I'll paste in some code so you don't need to watch me type. The code uses an NPM package to retrieve data from the Pokemon API. To use any NPM or PyPy packages on Pipedream, just import them into Node or Python code steps. Pipedream will automatically install them when you test or deploy. Next, let's summarize the data I got back from the Pokemon API. I'll use a code step to generate a prompt that I can pass to OpenAI. To do that, I need to convert the JSON object returned by the Pokemon API into a string. Once I get the results, I'll add a step to use a pre-built action that makes a request to OpenAI, and I'll pass the prompt that I just generated. Finally, I'll update the workflow to return the summary generated by OpenAI as the HTTP response. Then I'll test and deploy my changes. Next, I'll test my live workflow to confirm that the OpenAI summary is returned as the HTTP response. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the last part of the demo and explore some more advanced features. First, I'll configure GitHub Sync to enable source control. Once GitHub Sync is enabled, I need to create a development branch to edit project resources. Now I'm ready to keep editing my workflow. First, I'll update the trigger configuration to use a custom domain for the HTTP endpoint. Then I'll generate and select a new test event. Next, I'll add a step to query a Postgres database to get the Pokemon data instead of hitting the Pokemon API. I configured an IP whitelist to restrict access to my database, so my first test will fail. I'll update the workflow configuration to run it in a virtual private cloud or VPC. This runs my workflow in a private network with a static egress IP that's unique to my workspace. Now that the workflow is running in a VPC, the database request comes from an IP that I whitelisted, so the test is successful. Next, I'll modify an existing code step to transform the data returned from my database query. I'll start by renaming the step. When I do, Pipedream prompts me to replace references to the old step name. I can replace them all or review each search result. 
Next, I'll add and test my transformation code. After testing this step, I'll select the option to test the rest of the workflow. If there are any errors, they'll be highlighted so I can fix any issues. Next, I'll use Dolly from OpenAI to generate an image of the Pokemon. While we have a pre-built action to do this, I'm selecting the option to build an API request to show you how easily you can connect to any API for integrated apps. Just select your connected account and reference the API docs for your app to customize the endpoint and payload. Pipedream will handle the authentication. After I test the step, I can load the URL returned by OpenAI to preview the image. Next, I'll use AI to generate a custom Slack action. I'll tell Pipedream that I want to send a block kit message with text and an image. Pipedream's AI will then generate the code that defines the form inputs and the run function. I can also use AI to modify my code. In this case, I want to select the Slack channel from a drop-down menu. So I ask Pipedream's AI to use an async option for the channel and it updates the code. Next, I'll select a Slack channel and then copy and paste references to the summary and image generated by OpenAI for the Pokemon. Then I can test and check that the message was posted to Slack. Next, I'll click Merge to Production. Since the project is using GitHub Sync, I can first review a diff of all the changes. This feature is really valuable, especially when you have mission-critical workflows and you need to be confident about which changes will be deployed. Next, I'll run an end-to-end -end test with a different Pokemon. When it's done, I can inspect the execution and then validate the result in Slack. Also, since I'm syncing this project with GitHub, I can view the source code on GitHub and I can even make changes externally and push them to Pipedream. To demonstrate that, I'll update the prompt I'm sending to OpenAI to generate an image of an angry Pokemon. I can then merge directly to production, or I can create a PR and go through my standard change control process. When I merge changes from GitHub, they'll automatically deploy to Pipedream. I can then rerun the previous test to see the impact of the change. So I hope this demo helps you imagine how you might use Pipedream for your own use cases. There are many powerful features we didn't cover today, including data stores for state management, queue controls, and more. To learn more, get started with a free account at pipedream.com and contact our sales team to explore how Pipedream can help your team and business. Thanks for your time, and we can't wait to see what you build on Pipedream.